Welcome to Jambar TV. I'm Thomas Kushner. And I'm Amanda Jorn. This week's episode of Jambar TV is dedicated to a Youngstown legacy, The Vindicator. We will reflect on the newspaper's recent closing and how it affected the community. On June 28th, Youngstown's only daily newspaper, The Vindicator, announced they would cease publication after 150 years. The final edition of the paper was published on August 31st. Known for its progressive reporting on Valley corrupt officials, the Mafia, and the KKK, The Vindicator launched in 1869 and in 1887, William F. Mogg Sr. purchased the paper's nameplate. The family remained in the newsroom for four generations and closed under publisher Betty H. Brown Jagnow and general, Mar general manager Mark Brown. Although a decrease in advertisement revenue ultimately led to the paper's close, the Vindicator's impact in Youngstown is etched in stone. Jambar executive producer Alyssa Weston caught up with two former Vindicator editors to reflect on their reaction to the newspaper's closing and reminisce on their favorite memory while working in the newsroom. The Vindicator published its last edition on August 31st, 2019. The city lost its voice and 140 employees lost their jobs. Mark Sweetwood, former managing editor of The Vindicator, tells Jambar TV he tasked reporters with ensuring the newspaper's final stories would be memorable. We're going to give this thing a Viking funeral. And so our last week is going to be, we, I shoved a bunch of stories that I was playing for Sunday stories, put them all in the last week. I said, I want good, solid exclusive journalism. The Vindicator served as a watchdog for the Valley, one that listened when others wouldn't. When you can't call your state official, you can't call your, your city councilman, you can't call your cop to get protection, to get action, to get justice, who do you call? They call us. Franco said among his favorite Vindicator stories was a corruption case about fracking. The pushback Vindy received and the battle the paper went through to tell the story is what made it memorable. Every official that told him he's wrong was now calling him saying, we screwed up. We're trying to hide it. Here's what really happened. They all wanted to get their story out first. And, but by that point, it was clear. You guys screwed up. You got caught. And thank God we didn't flinch. The last printing day impacted every employee differently, but there was a sense of camaraderie between the staff as they put together the final newspaper, only this time it was their story. If you turn the audio down and just watch the body movement and the flailing of papers and proof this and, you know, some yelling across the room, I need this, I need that, it was a normal big story. But it was your story. The newspaper may have ceased publication after 150 years, but the stories the Vindicator told will live on forever. Alyssa Weston, Jambar TV. For three former Vindicator employees, incorporating teaching the students at Youngstown State University into their professional careers at the Vindicator has always gone hand in hand for them. Richard Logan, Mark Sweetwood, and Bill Lewis are now closing the doors to their former career at the Vindicator. The three used their sense of journalism style and work ethic at The Vindicator in their daily teaching methods to educate students on news-savvy techniques. Oftentimes I bring examples from, you know, that day's publication perhaps, um, you know, to keep things relevant, um, to keep students aware that, yeah, journalism is evolved, continues to evolve, even though some people seem to think of it as a dead art. Um, it's very much alive and very much needed, perhaps now more than ever. I really admire students who, who gravitate toward the profession today because they have it so much harder. It was, it was very rewarding to be able to take this, this knowledge that I had acquired over you know, decades of working in this business and be able to share it with, with students. It, it was very rewarding. And, and I don't think any of them went on to become you know, award-winning international photojournalists, but I think most of them were writers. And I was able to impart to them how important a good photograph was to tell a story. At the end of the day, you know, people need to know what journalism is and why it's important and why it's um, necessary for a thriving democracy. And if we if we if we don't if we're not training uh, you know journalists anymore, if we're training people who are good news consumers, that's kind of important too. The lesson here is is if you're going to be in 
in a journalism communication field, you always have to, you know, reinvent yourself. You have to know what's going on, and you can't think, well, I know everything because I came out of college, because that's, that's not how, what we do now is going to be different than how we do things in the future. As one door closes for these journalists, another door opens. Whether that be retirement or position at another media organization, new opportunities are on the rise in Youngstown. And although each opportunity may lead down new roads, there is one facet these three former Vindy enthusiasts all have in common, a passion for teaching authentic journalism. From investigative reporting to stories on education and local government, Two Youngstown State University graduates told Youngstown's narrative. Samantha Phillips and Greg Graziosi were trained as journalists at YSU's student-run newspaper, The Jam Bar. They worked as news reporters at The Vindicator and remained there until its final hours. Phillips worked at the newspaper for about two years. She says the series that stands out to her the most is her reporting on Justin Leo. The Girard police officer who was shot and killed in 2017 while responding to a domestic disturbance. It was her fourth day on the job, and her editor told her to talk to Leo's parents. That is a terrifying request for not just a young journalist who's just starting out, but for anybody, because these poor people had lost their son, and he was young. I went and I kind of sucked it up, and I knocked on the door, and I talked to them. And we had this nice interview about their son, and we kind of cried together, and just, they really opened their hearts to me. Phillips wrote several stories about fundraisers that created scholarships in Leo's memory, and how the community responded. Graziosi says his favorite story was written at the end of his time at The Vindicator. It was about a Jamaican immigrant, William Johnson, who lives on the south side of Youngstown. His story of getting here and using his skills and his tenacity and his drive to take an otherwise forgotten section of the south side that has been you know, basically abandoned by anybody except for the residents there and trying to start a community you know, for himself there. For the pair, Working at The Vindicator gave them the ability to tell stories that mattered to the people of Youngstown. I'm Rachel Gobet, Jambar TV. Two YSU alumni and former Jambar reporters were given opportunities to work at The Vindicator. Jambar reporter Rachel Gobep highlights their journeys from YSU to Vindy as they continued to be voice of Youngstown. Some of us knew that day was coming. Um, I just don't think that any of us realized it would be that fast, that soon. Um, when there were so many things happening behind the scenes that a lot of us didn't know about. Um, that, you know, I, I think that there was probably, the writing was on the wall about how long the Vindicator had left. Uh, but many of us thought it would be years, not months. The end of the Vindicator will change the landscape of journalism in the Mahoning Valley forever. To many, the newspaper's closure represents the direction journalism is headed and the consequences news organizations can suffer. Most newspapers have relied on print subscribers and advertisement revenue in the past, but the internet has made that extremely difficult to survive on. There are four main initiatives by local and online-only news organizations to replace The Vindicator, including the Compass Experiment by McClatchy, the Business Journal's recent partnering with ProPublica, local broadcast stations WFMJ and WKBN pledging to expand coverage, and the Tribune Chronicle now printing a Mahoning County edition under the masthead of The Vindicator. Sports is among many industries in the Valley whose coverage will be affected by Vindy's closing. I'm going to miss my, my co-workers. My, I mean, they're more than that. You know, uh, you know we're... we're friends and colleagues and, and family, really. Uh, it's, a, it's a situation where, you know, we almost spend more time with each other than we do with our families. The outpouring of support from the community has been overwhelming. So many people from outside the building that we've covered, that we've worked with, um, have reached out to us uh, and to me and, and just, you know, told us how much they appreciate what we did, um, you know, uh, in, in covering their teams and covering them and um, it really was uh, touching. Going forward, Ed is unsure what the future of sports media is, but he's hopeful that the new staff of the reborn Vindicator handles the market with care. My hope is that is that you know the, the people that are taking the baton from us, um, it, first that they appreciate that they're now they've now been entrusted with covering what I consider the best sports town for its size anywhere. Brian Yager. Jambar TV. 
Among theater reviews, concert recaps, and art gallery announcements, the Vindicators had a heavy hand in the arts and entertainment community in Youngstown. JMR reporter Francis Claus looked into how the Youngstown entertainment scene could change without the Vindicators' coverage. When I started at the Vindicator, everything changed in terms of entertainment because Cavelli Center opened in the fall of 2005, the Ford Family Recital Hall opened, and things got real busy. Um, and you know, before that, Youngstown was had nowhere near the, the amount of entertainment that it does today. The effects of the Vindicator closing were felt by the Rust Belt Theater Company, who have had the support of the newspaper from their opening in June 2010 to the promotion of their most recent musical, Frank and Fabulous, this past August. I worked at the Oakland Center for the Arts for about 12 years downtown um, before I started the Rust Belt Theater Company. And um, my relationship with Guy Destolfo, the entertainment edit editor of the Vindicator, started there. Um, he was always very good about um, uh, giving us publicity for the different events that we would do. And then when I uh, started this company, he kind of followed me here, and he's honestly been one of our biggest cheerleaders. As the Stolfo continues his entertainment journey at the Business Journal, he remains with a positive outlook on outlets coming to the scene to cover entertainment and fill the void of the Vindicator. I, I think that the entertainment scene in this area is going to continue to grow. Like, for example, this amphitheater is absolutely, the to me, it's the best thing we have. Um, next, probably next spring, the Robbins Theater is going to open in Warren, and it's, you know, whoever goes into it, there's, there's going to be a lot to do, a lot to cover. So yeah, looking forward to it. The crew here at Jambar TV would like to express our gratitude to The Vindicator for inspiring young journalists like us. Thank you. Up next, executive producer Alyssa Weston will be sitting down with former editor of The Vindicator, Todd Franco. So stay tuned after these messages. Indianapolis, the heart of hoops hysteria. And beginning in March, the home of the Horizon League men's and women's basketball championships. Eight teams look to reach the horizon and punch their ticket to the NCAA tournament at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum. Semifinal action takes place Monday, March 9th, and Horizon League champions are crowned Tuesday, March 10th. Visit horizonleague.com for more information and to score your tickets today. Hey kid, you want to try some exercise? Wait, what? What's going on right now? Yeah man, exercise. I don't know. I don't know if I should even be talking to you right now. It's got lots of benefits. Mm. Okay. The benefits of exercise include increased levels of energy, higher quality of sleep, better muscle and bone strength, improved memory, and clearer skin. You're here to be part of something bigger, to make things happen. For you, college is about knowledge being shared, and learning experiences that aren't limited to the classroom. On campus, you want to matter. It's about engaging every day, building relationships with students, with mentors, with the community in the heart of a reinvented city. We are that something bigger. We are Youngstown State University and proud. You're not waiting to see what the world has in store for you. It's more about what you have in store for the world. All you need is the opportunity. All you need are the resources of a large university and the advantages of a personalized academic setting where you can experience new worlds in the arts and sciences business and education and make them your own. We are where you shape your future. We are Youngstown State University and proud. Welcome back to Jambar TV. Today I'm joined with former editor of The Vindicator, Todd Franco. Todd, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. I love the surroundings. Well, uh, I wanted to ask you what your reaction was when you first heard that the Vindicator was going to be closing. Did it surprise you at all? Yeah, I think we were all stunned. Uh, we've been planning on cuts and reductions for several months, several years, but definitely for the last six months or so, been planning on some dramatic changes. And when we went to that meeting, I was uh, fully expected to be one of 15, 20 managers laid off across the, the entire company. So I was prepped for something, but uh, closure was a complete surprise. 
And I think all of us were in the room. I think it was weird. I think the, uh, you, know, you hear it and you want to make sure you heard it. But then once we heard it, you, you were, I guess no different than going into battle or some dramatic uh, life change that we all just nodded our heads and started that next chapter of planning right, right there, working with our boss, the ownership group to kind of strategize on how best we can perform our role for the final eight weeks. But uh, yeah, there was this momentary holy cow. And then once we digested it, there was no tears, no nothing, just a matter of fact. All right, let's, let's figure out the next step. I know you said that what you thought was going to be the funeral for about 15 of you soon became a funeral for the whole community. Correct. That was a crazy, um, crazy four or five days. Uh, um, re kind of rewarding to a degree because, you know, the, you know, you don't get to live through your funeral, so to speak. So you get to hear all these compliments and the impact that you had on people's lives. So, yes, we walked in there thinking it was going to be 20 of us who were having our professional funeral. And then when you realize the whole community reacted the way they did, I shouldn't say the whole, but just an outpouring of um, stunned feelings, regret, what could have, should have gone on, all those kind of things. But then also just this wave of my favorite part was this, um, you know, the, the paper boy, everyone's got a paper boy story, it seems. So we got a lot of paper boy stories. So kept a lot of, kept a lot of the letters, kept a lot of the emails. So it was, it was unique and some, and somewhat, I think, soothing as we're going through this as a newsroom to recognize that there was a, there was a community that was impacted by this as well. Well, there's a few local media sources who have offered to kind of step in and fill the gaps of what the Vindicator mm -hmm. will leave behind. Uh, <clears throat> how do you feel about this, and what do you think the future of journalism in the Valley will be? I'm proud to be a subscriber to the uh, Tribune Chronicles Vindicator. It's a little weird, uh, Sunday morning, September 1st, to see the Vindicator with a little orange uh, produced by the Tribune Chronicles sticker off to the right, but uh, proud of them. Proud of the folks at the Business Journal, excited for the uh, McClatchy folks. Um, I think uh, ultimately you want to keep the lights on. I think that's what, you know, it's a newspaper. It's Dan Rivers on KBN Radio. It's the Business Journal. It's Mark Paco. I think the ultimate goal is that a community needs oxygen. It needs light, correct? And I think journalism and storytelling is that. So any way that they can keep the lights on for the Valley, I think, is is is, is key and critical to everybody, not just people in our profession, <clears throat> but I think the folks who called us over those four or five days, and it continued for eight weeks. So it's been uh, neat to watch, um, eager to help them out. Um, had a lot of had a lot of good phone calls and uh, excited for them. Well, you mentioned the Tribune Chronicle. Uh, <clears throat> they bought the Vindicator name, web domain, and subscription list within 24 hours of gaining the rights on August 31st, all previous Vindy yeah. articles had been erased on the website. What was your reaction to um, that? Stunning. Uh, so, that, so that's, uh, make sure we understand the, the difference. Um, that was a, my boss's decision, our company decision. I think there's legalities tied to closing down a business as opposed to going bankrupt or whatever. So we actually closed the business, or, or my, my, my boss did. And I think there's legalities involved in making sure that all facets of the business closed down for good. So, yeah, it was uh, 20 years. Of, so it had, had nothing to do with the Tribune Chronicle. <clears throat> Vindy.com was going to go dark regardless from A to Z, live news as well as 20 years of archives. So that the Tribune Chronicle stepped in and bought the URL and the name, they were allowed to use it from September 1st on, but 20 years past is gone overnight. We are actually with some friends that night at about 10 o'clock going through all the archives just to see people were remembering 2003 stories and 2007 stories. And I said, all right, let's just watch the clock. And sure enough, about 11.50, we all went back, 11.55. We all went back to our phones and started going and blank. Well, thank you for, for clarifying that. And on a final note, can you <clears throat> maybe reflect on a favorite newsroom memory or favorite story you had during your time as editor? Well, we just watched the, uh, the incident about the, uh, the, the, the fracking and the injection well. So that was certainly a proud episode. Um, you know, proud of the staff there. I'd say to balance that, because a lot of the job for me is fun. I think, you know, we, we get our juices going for the... Uh, for the uh, breaking news and the watchdog stuff, but the job is so fun. And I would say the most fun I had was the Kelly Pavlik night when, when they had the, the fight at the Cavelli Center. I can't remember the gentleman's name. Um, I remember being there. Um, we had 
uh, mock front pages made. And actually, in, in cleaning out my files over the last week, I found the actual picture of the Vindicator in the front row with Pavlik wins, you know, like everything that. So, so that was just awesome. The, uh, the fireworks as Kelly pulled in, the Vindicator coverage beforehand. We had a live paper that night. So I'd say that was the most fun. Well, I know you're continuing your career at Report for America, so good luck in the future. Thank you very much. Um, up next, Abigail will be joining us to talk about the latest arts and entertainment in Youngstown. The feeling when my hands are on the piano, it's become comforting. It's somewhere that I can express myself. I go to Youngstown State University and my passion is playing music. YSU is allowing me to take what I love and turn it into a career and do it every single day of my life. I'm Alyssa and I'm Wyan Proud. Growing up, I love figuring out how things work, putting things together. I love being able to come up with an idea, design it, just the whole process of creating things. I go to school here at Youngstown State and my passion is 3D design. I chose YSU because all the equipment, the research being done here, it's like a playground for me. I'm Alex and I'm Y and Proud. Hey Gwens, welcome to Student Activities Minute. My name is Sarah and I'm a member of Penguin Productions, which is a student programming board here at YSU. This week we've got three very exciting things going on. Penguin Productions is so excited to invite you to our first event of the semester. We're kicking off our concert series next Thursday, September 12th, with Emily Rio, a Brooklyn-based pop artist, and with local act, Grief Shark. It's going to be a great night, there's going to be snacks. Doors open at 8, music at 8.15, I'll see you there. Two days after the concert, on Saturday, September 14th, is YSU Family Day. If you're interested in bringing your family out to enjoy the campus and experience YSU with you, stop by the Student Activities office for details and pick up your event calendar while you're there. Lastly, if you haven't heard, on September 21st, Y Live is having Blake Shelton right on campus at Stanbaugh Stadium. It's going to be a great night, and I'll see you there. In honor of National Overdose Awareness Day, the Unitarian Universalist Church of Youngstown held a vigil for the victims of drug overdoses in the Mahoning Valley. The Mahoning County branch of Change Addiction Now organized the event on August 29th. Representatives of the Mahoning County Department of Health conducted a presentation on Narcan, a medication capable of blocking the effects of opioid overdose. Youngstown resident Anthony Bell attended the event. I came to the event because I'm staying at a sober living house, Red Zone, right now. And we just came here for the Narcan kit so we could have that just to be safe and make sure that if something does go down or something happens, that we have that back up to bring the life back. The event also featured Bishop jo Joseph McNeil and other speakers who shared their stories. Ohio Can coordinator Hope Ban Lavenroff Moran sh uh, says the event raises awareness while also honoring the lives of the victims. Dirty Girls Magazine is empowering and inclusive literary magazine that features writers and artists from across the globe. Youngstown State University student Joelle Lambert and her best friend Mackenzie Teeter created this magazine to show how young women can use their differences to make a difference. Dirty Girls Magazine, uh, the name was pretty much inspired by the fact that I was bullied in middle school and high school. So it's using like words that were intended to be hurtful and using them to overcome adversity and gain strength and use these words to empower ourselves rather than to feel bad. Issue 1 of Dirty Girls is available to read and purchase online, and Issue 2 will be released in early December. Submissions for Issue 2 are open until October 1st. For information on submissions and where to purchase a copy, visit DirtyGirlsMagazine.com. For students struggling to find what major is right for them, the Office of Career and Academic Advising can assist undergraduate students in setting career goals and train them in professional skill sets that will leave a lasting impression on future employers. We have two
two different types of services that we offer. We have academic services uh, that where students are afforded the opportunity to do academic advising in an exploratory setting to make sure that students are not wasting time, money, or energy on classes that wouldn't count towards different degrees at Youngstown State University. But then also professionally, we help students to uh, create resumes, to do mock interviews, to make sure that they're selling their skills. Advisors in the Office of Career and Academic Advising are available to help students answer questions Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. in Jones Hall, room 2002. After the commercial, Dom and Brandon will give us our weekly update on the sports. Stay tuned. It's always out there. The horizon. A reminder that our greatest goals are rarely attained. And as soon as you reach one, another emerges. But every day we rise and work harder, dig deeper, ask one more question, take one more shot in relentless pursuit of our horizon. Founded in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. Competing at the highest level of NCAA Division I, student athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student, an athlete, and a citizen. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged. The environment in the hospital can be very intense for a patient. Being able to put a smile on their face brightens up my day. I go to Youngstown State University and my passion is nursing. What I love about studying nursing is that it takes you out of the classroom and into the lab. It's really hands-on. The professors here push you to be your absolute best, so if you want it, you gotta work hard for it. I am so excited about my future. I'm Shantiana, and I am why I'm proud. You're looking to your future, preparing for your goals, and they're closer than you think. Because here, success is part of the plan. It's a place where academic and social opportunities are meant to prepare you for life, not just the next four years you'll be equipped to face new challenges and turn hard work into a career. You're ready for your success to take root. And here's where it starts. We are Youngstown State University and proud. Welcome back to Jambar TV. I'm Dom Joseph. And I'm Brandon Trelecki, bringing you everything Youngstown State sports news. The Youngstown State men's tennis team had a good outing in 2018, going 12-8 overall and going 5-1 in the Horizon League Conference. This year, the team looks to repeat their success and win the conference. With losing key players such as Danilo Veramichuk, Yossi Dahan, and Luke Purser, the team is positive that their new additions in 2019 will have a huge impact going forward. I think uh, we have a lot of experience in this team now. We have uh, a lot of uh, players that was here, were here uh, for three, two years. So we're going to help a lot of the freshmen to, to become uh, better players and hope they can uh, help us uh, lead the conference. I mean, I would say we lost some uh, key players last year, uh, this year, but we gained a lot of uh, good players too. So I think it'll be the same. Uh, a lot of competitiveness in uh, two new guys, so we'll be fine. The Youngstown State Volleyball team successfully began their season on Friday, August 30th, with wins over St. Francis University and Bucknell University. The team is coming off a 7-22 season in which the Penguins only won one game at home and one in conference play. With the start of the season underway, the Penguins are trying to fulfill big expectations. I'm really excited this season because we have a lot of newcomers that um, definitely are adding a lot of new things to our roster overall. So I think overall we're just a better team this year. Thank you, Dom and Brandon, for those sports updates. Thanks for tuning into Jambar TV. For more information on our stories and more YSU content, check out our website or pick up a copy of the Jambar today. We'll see you next Friday at noon, Penguins. The feeling when my hands are on the piano, it's become comforting. It's somewhere that I can express myself. I go to Youngstown State University and my passion is playing music. 
YSU is allowing me to take what I love and turn it into a career and do it every single day of my life. I'm Alyssa and I'm Y and Proud.